guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be trying out the Dash Fresh Pop Popcorn Maker. And not only are we going to be reviewing it, but we're also going to make every recipe in the recipe guide. to do this because it's date night and we are gonna stay home and continue watching Money Heist. We're on season two right now. So we will have a lot of delicious, savory and sweet popcorn treats to consume. Let's start with an unboxing. Recipe number one, homemade unprocessed pop. It looks like you're gonna need four tablespoons of coconut oil, plus the kernels, and some salt. Uh, but when you look down here, it says to add two tablespoons of coconut oil to the measuring cup, so uh, I don't know, maybe they changed the recipe and only decided to change the top part, or I don't know, I think maybe. Whoever made these recipe books uh, never had anybody um, read over them <laughs> for editing errors because this, uh, in the last recipe book we saw quite a few, um, errors like that, like telling us to have an ingredient and then never telling us to put it in the recipe or saying one amount up here and a different amount down here. Anyway, this is what we got. We got some, it says solidified coconut oil, so you're going to want to get the virgin unrefined because that's the kind that is solid at room temperature and I don't know what kind of kernels these are hopefully they're the right size so we need one measuring cup of the kernels uh, I hope this bowl holds 16 cups I don't really know line up our bowl and let her rip. It doesn't seem like those the last few are going to pop. They've been in there a while. And it's been spitting some of them out. So, it's likely that that's just because I have old popcorn. Um, and 
Despite the fact that my bowl was humongous, it still made a ginormous mess in here. I don't know. Maybe if you have like a square bowl or like a square tub that could sit right under this, I think it would catch more. Um, but let's add our coconut oil and our salt now. <gasps> and the plastic is very hot. Um, that's kind of dangerous with hot oil. I don't know how hot the oil is though. Okay, the oil is not hot enough to burn you. Pop that around. Okay, recipe number one, unprocessed pop. Let's give it a try. Tastes like coconut oil. All right, I'm good on this one. Let's get to one of the more fun recipes. Recipe number two, movie theater popcorn. Actually, it is the same exact recipe, except it calls for um, butter instead of coconut oil. All right, let's get started. For this recipe, we're gonna try out my Yoko's European style cultured vegan butter with a hint of salt. It's first ingredient is coconut oil, but it really doesn't taste like coconut oil. And then it has cashew milk and some other, uh, some sunflower oil and stuff. Um, it's lactose free, palm oil free, which is another thing that bothers me, soy free. And I did use the scale back there to weigh it out. So we're going to use 28 grams, which should be two tablespoons. Side note, this thing does say to let it rest for about 12 minutes in between rounds of popcorn. Also, we're going to try this bowl under it to get it up higher and see if that helps it be a little bit less spilly today. The butter's not all the way melted yet. It says if you just let it sit in there, it'll melt the rest of the way though. Other than that big chunk, there wasn't too many burnt ones. This is really good. I'll probably eat all of this tonight. Alright guys, we are ready to try making some cashew caramel corn. This is what you're going to need for the recipe. A cup of your kernels. You're going to need a half a cup of coconut sugar, but I'm going to use regular sugar because it's about 50 cents a pound and coconut sugar is about $6 a pound. So I didn't really feel like buying it. You know what's healthier than sugar? Less sugar. <laughs> And then we got our quarter teaspoon of baking soda. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Half a teaspoon of vanilla, one and a half cups of brown sugar. You know, if you don't think making caramel from scratch is enough of a challenge, try making it with brown sugar that's been in your pantry since the pandemic started. It was very difficult to get it out of that jar, but we did use the wet napkin on top of it. Um, in the microwave hack to loosen it up a little bit. And we got our two cups of cashews and three fourths of a cup of butter. That's an eight ounce container and it's most of the way full. So I'm hoping that will work. Now this recipe doesn't tell you until the very end that you're gonna need to bake this at 300 degrees. So luckily I read the whole thing ahead of time. We're gonna go preheat the oven first.
that was going to be the hardest of all the recipes. Here's what it looks like. I would say maybe blending up the cashews would have made it better because they did kind of, they don't really stick to the popcorn at this size. Let's give it a taste. It tastes like Christmas! You should definitely try this. I made it with real butter because I'm not planning on eating a lot of it. We're gonna save this and give it to my husband. Next up on the list is spicy jalapeno popcorn. It calls for popcorn kernels, coconut oil again, and jalapeno flakes. So we got our popcorn kernels. I think I'm gonna try canola oil with this one just because I feel like the jalapeno flavor is supposed to be the star of the show and the unrefined coconut oil is pretty overpowering so we're gonna go this way instead now i don't have jalapeno flakes at any store near me the closest thing i could find was these crispy jalapenos by fresh gourmet it's kind of like a salad topping they're actually seems like they're like breaded and deep fried so i'm sure it's not going to be as pungent as actual jalapeno flakes so instead of doing a teaspoon i took two tablespoons of this and i ground it up it came out to probably about one tablespoon um now that it's ground up so we're going to start by popping our popcorn and then we'll mix this in but that like didn't work at all it just when I sprinkled it it just all clumped together nope that was an epic fail anyway so I guess if you really like jalapenos and you have those available to you or you want to order them online that maybe you could try this recipe but otherwise like don't do it the way I did because it was a waste of time I found one little bite that has jalapeno on it Oh, and the jalapeno fell off onto the ground. The next one I'm pretty excited about. It's Cheesy Cheddar Pop. Now this one is made with butter. I'm going to make it with Mayokos. Um, and then it calls for mustard powder, cheese powder, and red chili powder. Now cheese powder is another one of those things that you would have to order online. Except if you buy the popcorn cheese powder... Um, that stuff is readily available anyway, the stuff that's already made to go on popcorn. Of course, we are going to make it dairy-free so that I can eat it, so I'll show you what I'm using. For the cheese powder, I'm going to be using this Annie's Homegrown Organic Vegan Mac um, because it comes with a packet of vegan cheddar powder. Now, one packet is only about an, uh, less than a fourth of a cup, so I would probably buy five of these if you wanted to make the whole recipe um, but I'm just gonna cut the recipe in only make a fourth of the recipe so about half of one of those bowls so then instead of a teaspoon we're gonna use a quarter teaspoon of the chili powder and the ground mustard to go with that So I think you saw we definitely had an issue where just like all of the cheese powder just went straight to the bottom of the bowl and kind of stayed there. So one thing that I tried is spraying some spray oil so that the kernels get more evenly coated. That way they'll pick up the cheese and I think it helped. So let's give it a try. I got one with a lot of cheese on it. It's good. It had that cheese smell when I opened the package so I really like that. I think it would be good with just the cheese powder on it. This is definitely one that you should try at home. All right, this one looks interesting. Spicy Ranch Popcorn. It calls for butter, three tablespoons this time. 
um, garlic powder, which I love on popcorn, dried parsley, cayenne pepper, and dried chives. Is anyone else wondering why they told you to put three teaspoons of each of these instead of just saying to put a tablespoon? I had most of the ingredients for this recipe. I did have to purchase the dried chives. I've never seen these before, but apparently they had them at my Super Walmart. I would say that's another fail. I thought that adding the spices to the butter was going to help with the sticking, but in reality it just made it into a gunk. I tried adding water um, so that it would pour over it like it said, but that just made it soggy. So yeah, it's kind of gross. I want to try this. Um, Maybe use the spray oil technique and just sprinkle the spices. That's what I usually do when I make garlic popcorn. It mostly just tastes like cayenne pepper. I think it kind of overpowered all the other spices. I would not try this one. The easy caramel corn. So this one takes our kernels, half a cup of butter, one cup brown sugar, quarter cup of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Um, I have three and a half ounces of butter. I'm hoping that will do because that's all I have left. Um, then I have my brown sugar, <laughs> which again, like I suggest if you buy brown sugar, just keep it in the bag it came in because in this container, it was very hard to get it soft. We're gonna use Almond Breeze for our milk and our vanilla. done. Um, I think you probably could notice from the video that it was really thin and I'm not sure if it I just didn't cook it long enough for it to thicken up. It said to only cook it for two minutes and it looked like it had thickened up so I pulled it off the burner. Um, it could be that or that you add milk to this one um, but it was pretty watery and when I poured it on the corn a lot of them shriveled up and shrank. Um, and some of them have that like gooey soft texture. Um, but the taste is amazing, obviously. It's butter and sugar, you can't go wrong with that. So I'm definitely gonna eat some of this because it is dairy free and caramel corn is delicious. But in the future, I think I would stick to the directions with and the ingredients for the regular caramel corn because it really wasn't that much harder and the texture came out a lot better on that one. All right, are you guys ready for the last recipe in the book? I'm really excited about this one. It's s'mores popcorn. Let's check it out. I think there's just enough for one more round. Perfection! Right, so here's our recipe for s'mores popcorn. You're gonna need popcorn, golden graham cereal, mini marshmallows, and chocolate wafers. So this is what the cereal looks like. I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't taste that much like graham crackers. It mostly tastes like wheat covered in sugar. If you wanted to try this with just crushed up graham crackers, it would probably taste better to be honest. Um, we got our jet puffed mini marshmallows and for the chocolate, I don't have wafers that are dairy free, but these are the Enjoy Life um, chocolates. I'm pretty sure the ingredients in them were only like cocoa butter and sugar. So I'm hoping they melt really nicely. They don't seem to have like a coating on them. Final taste. 
taste test of the recipe book. There is our s'mores popcorn. I'm going to try to get a chunk that has a marshmallow and a graham cracker in it. There, that's like the perfect bite right there. That one is a winner and it was super easy. I would definitely say to make this one. Let's do a review. Okay, so for our sweet ones, the cashew caramel was definitely the best, but it was a lot of work. The s'mores was delicious and easy. The easy corn, really don't waste your time because it doesn't turn out as good as the regular recipe. As far as the savory ones, the unprocessed pop is kind of like overrated fad diet stuff in my opinion because your um, coconut oil is going to have just as much calories as any other oil but if you like the taste of coconut oil it's a good option. I would say the movie theater popcorn was a hit as well as the cheesy popcorn. The two where you had to stick stuff to the popcorn didn't actually work out that well. If you want a spicy one I would suggest that you use the spray oil and then dump whatever spicy topping on it you like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. We're gonna keep rolling with this Dash series. Um, if you haven't already, check out my I Made Every Recipe in the Dash Egg Bite Maker video. Um, coming up soon, we're gonna have the griddle, the waffle iron, the air fryer, and the rice maker. So stay tuned. Bye guys!